everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show and we have a very interesting subject today which is all about men becoming more image conscious but first of all let's introduce Rihanna who's here with the news. Hello. Hello my love. Do you reckon men are getting more image conscious? Do you know, I never really kind of clicked into it. Mm. Now that you say it, there's a lot of men taking selfies than women. Uh, that should say something because men never used to care about the camera. Men really? just used to. Well, from what I think, men just mm. used to be about, okay, I look great, I don't need to boast. But now it's, I look great, and you need to see that I look great, and everyone needs to know that I look great. Okay. So I, I agree with you on that. All right. But we're going to be talking about more sort of the negative uh, image that they have of themselves because actually a lot of men are becoming very self-conscious and sometimes even more than women and eating disorders and over-exercising in men is on the rise. So today we're going to be talking to various experts for advice. We have Dr. Nahara Kraus, who's an expert in this field. We'll also be going to a Skype call with Stefan Pierre Mitchell. Do you remember him? He was on the show is it a while the back. Doctor one. Not the doctor one. <laughs> I'll tell you later. <laughs> now, he's a youth mentor and actor who also has experience in these areas. And joining us later, we also have fitness therapist, trainer, and model Malik Kadu. And we have the self development clinic with Chris Brown. And today he's going to be talking about how to believe in you. And as every show, we have the fitness tip with Jane, this time with Jane and Aaliyah, and they're going to be speaking about the do's and don'ts of nutrition. How's your diet, by the way? It's going fab. Have you I lost any more? Like Yes, I have. Um, I'm not going to disclose it though. Learned that from last you time. You told everyone, everyone your weight last time. I know. <laughs> so you can tell us how much you've lost. You don't have to I think us. I've lost, um, let me see that I get it right. I've lost another, an, another pound. Well done. Another okay. pound. Okay. <laughs> I'm careful with well, my words now. <laughs> but let's see what else we have on the show. We'll also have our nutritious cooking tip from Hannah Richards. And she'll be preparing a lovely protein smoothie. And I'll be answering a question from a viewer later on. But let's go straight to the news of Rihanna, first of all. I would like one of those smoothies. One They're really day. nice. I want to try one. Yes. I think it will help me in my diet. Mm. Be fabulous, just not replacing my meals. No. But let's go to the news. Now, our lovely, lovely, lovely Prince Harry celebrated his birthday. I, I think he's such a fab guy. I mean, he's been through it all. Mm. Taliban, Afghanistan, he's done a bit of running with him, Hussein Bolt, he's done a lot yeah. for charities. I mean, he's just been like... We've got someone here that works with Hussein Bolt as well. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. Well, That's a really fast guy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go anywhere near a track with him. When they say start, he'll be at the finishing line and I'll just about yeah. be getting up. But Prince Harry, I think he's, I don't know, how can I put this? He is somewhat an example, though he's had a lot of highs and lows, yeah. but he's committed himself to doing some really good work, mm -hmm. charity, yeah, work, charity work, and just, especially. he's yeah. a lot like his mum, if I can say, yeah. the late Princess yeah. Diana. So I, I quite admire him. I think yeah, he's, he's a nice. pretty cool guy. My yeah. definition of cool is Prince Harry. Mm -hmm. Does he take <laughs> selfies? He did. I've never seen any. He did at one point, though he was, he had this thing against out, social they? media and like, because mm -hmm. it goes into, you know, their private lives and stuff, which yeah, he doesn't yeah. really like. But he kind of got over that when he did, um, he did his launch for the, I think it's the Infectious Games for the um, disabled servicemen. Mm -hmm. And he kind of went into a school and he did all this talk and he said that he didn't really like social media, but for some reasons, you know, he'll go on here and there and just... Make everyone know that he's a, a normal yeah, he's guy. Yeah, nice. I like he's him. He's really nice. They're, like they're quite down to earth, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Well, I wouldn't really know. I've met him, but... <laughs> but We're yeah. assuming they're down to earth. And that's yeah. our Prince Harry. Okay. But on to a more lighter note, a selfie at its peak. I really wish I had a picture. Oh, Remember the last time I showed cool. you the, the selfie with the guy on top of the Lord oh, yeah. thingy? Well, this one... Um, this lady and her friend, they climbed a 12,000-foot 12, mountain and they took a selfie right at the peak, but then the clouds covered it, so we couldn't really see the view, but oh. it looked insane. I mean, I wouldn't, I just, you know, sometimes I get, I feel sick looking back at the stairs when I go up a really tall building. So imagine climbing up so high, I think it was the, okay, I really can't pronounce it, but it's something the grand, and it was really, really high. Something the grand. But it's like going up the Ben Nevis, I, I couldn't do it. How, how many how many feet was that? I can't remember how many. I have no idea, but I know it's really, really cold. Yeah, yeah. And very, very scary. Didn't you go? I did, yes. How was it? It was very difficult. Yeah, we, we climbed Ben Nevis for um, charity, didn't we? It was really hard. No was, selfies was it, back four, then, it was only like four, four and a half hours. Was it up, go, up going up? Only, I say, but for that, for, for us it was a lot. Four hours only going up? 
wasn't it? I think it was something like that. Oh, wow. But it was harder coming down, actually. How, how that, is that I got, possible? I don't know. It, I found it harder coming down because it was hard on the knees. Yes. Well, that was very difficult. Was scary. I would cold. love to do something so adventurous like that, but I don't, I don't know. Sometimes I, I know I have this good, crazy side of me, but to do something like that, I have no <laughs> idea. Something really, really important would have to drive me and, you know, one day yeah. it's going to happen. Charity. Yeah, there always for charity. As you were saying about men being all self-conscious and what mm. have you, women would rather hear that they look young than slim. Oh, really? I, I, I don't know, I thought... You got a compliment today, someone said you looked yeah. young. After they said you look... I won't say what, <laughs> what they it's said. It's really nice. <laughs> I am young, I'm very, very young. But I, I'm quite shocked because I thought women would prefer to look slimmer than younger because everyone goes on about weight, size and all of this, but most of them worry about you know, being younger, they want to look young, you know, have the whole Cameron Diaz feel going to it. Yeah. But what's wrong with not looking young? What's wrong with just growing older gracefully? There's nothing wrong with that, surely. No, of course there's not, but people are, well, as we'll be speaking about today, it's all to do with the media, isn't it? So people yeah. are very self-conscious. They think that this is what you have to look like and young is best and once you're over a certain age and life's over for you. But when we're younger, we're more naive. We, we don't have a clue about what's going on. I didn't have a clue about what was going on last week. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like two thirds of women use anti-aging products because they want to look forever young. I know mm -hmm. we have forever young at the store, but we won't always be forever young. We have to, I think we need to embrace growing. Yeah, but you're saying that because you don't have any wrinkles yet. No. I do facial exercises so that I don't get them. <laughs> don't show us, Rihanna. <laughs> it's really easy. I won't show you, but, you know, getting older, I, I don't think it's a problem. Actually, when you, say, when you give someone a compliment to say you're looking young, it means that they normally look older then, right? I think that's quite a, not a nice compliment. <laughs> it depends on how you phrase it, I suppose. Or you could say, oh, you look gracefully younger or yeah. gracefully something. Throw gracefully in there and yeah. you're the best compliment giver in the world. That's right. I hope so. Gosh, when I get to that age, I hope someone tells me that I'm gracefully young always. It'll be nice. How old I mean, are you? I can't say that on TV. Oh, she's learnt now. She, she normally <laughs> says these like, random things about I just herself. Let I, it out. I said to her, I can't believe you just told everyone on TV like certain things. <laughs> it was insane. I guess I was she's younger She's more careful now. Yeah. Do you have any more? I've grown. Yes, um, I also found out by um, Christy, Christy Allsop, she said women don't want to have children. So women who don't want to have children are closest to having it all than women who do have children. But she said this before she actually gave birth. She prepared herself thinking, just in case I run out of time, she had some eggs frozen so that later on she can do the whole process. But then she happened to meet someone, they were happy together and now they have children. But mm. she was saying that when you, you know, when a, a young woman kind of wants it all, they're very career driven, they just go for it. They forget about, you know, settling down, forget about family, and they just want to achieve. And in a way, they don't have anything blocking them or anything or anyone slowing them down. Um, I don't know. I, I agree to a certain extent, but I don't think that if you do decide to have a family that you're going to be slowed down. And I think after having children, she realised that. I don't mm. know what your take on it. Well, I, I, don't have, I don't have children myself, but... I don't think you can probably do as much, obviously when the kids are really young and you're going to stay home and look after them. I don't think you can do as much, obviously, because it's just a full-time job. Yeah. Everyone that I know that has children, they're, they're really like, they work really hard, really, really hard. Yes. But it's not impossible because I also know people that have had young children and they start their own businesses from home. I don't know how they do it. It must be a miracle. Because some of them have more than one, one child, but they, there is, if you're determined and you don't mind sort of not getting much sleep, you can you can do a lot even can be with, career with children and still be a mother. Yeah. I think mothers have um how can I put this? They're great. They're be when they're mothers, it's like they have enough time to kind of think. Maybe when nursing the child, they can think about something they can do from their own home to start a business. Mm. So it's kind of I don't know. It kind of works to into. I think you'd have to be really really strong to do that. But she did learn afterwards. But it depends on what your definition of all is, because some people are content. Some women are content with staying at home with the kids and that for them is like Just everything that's that they've achieved everything by having children and raising a family others they want to do a bit of both others they don't want kids they just want to concentrate on their career so i think it depends on the individual you have to have you know go for what your all means, means for you it's true yeah. because one person's all is not the next person's all 
exactly. my or could be sitting at home having ice cream. <laughs> no, you don't do that anymore, Rihanna, because no, you're don't. on a diet. No, I don't. I have fruits and I've been drinking a lot of water. Good girl. But I'm I got glad. bored of water, so I start putting pieces of fruits in. Oh, good. All right, on that note, we have to leave you. <laughs> you can give us another update on your fitness. Next. Actually, week. we've got a trainer over there. You can get a few tips. <laughs> oh, yeah, I need some of those. <laughs> All right, so thank you very much, thank Rihanna. You, we'll see you again next time. But do stay tuned because after the break, we'll take a look at our fitness tips from Jane and Ilya on the do's and don'ts of nutrition. And we'll also be speaking to Dr. Nihara, let me try again, Nihara Kraus <laughs> on body issues in men. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show. Now, before we go to our first guest to discuss body image issues in men and eating disorders, let's first take a look at our fitness tip from Jane and Ilya on the do's and don'ts of nutrition. Jane, welcome to our top fitness tips for the week. And I'm with Elia, who's a celebrity fitness trainer. So welcome to Elia as well. It's lovely to have you with us. Now, we are today going to talk about um, nutrition and the do's and don'ts of nutrition. And it really is a huge subject. So we're going to try and cram it down into our little top fitness tips for you. Um, one of the things that I always say to my clients is that women tend not to eat enough protein and I've talked to Elia about this before and he says it's the same for men actually, is that right Elia? I think a lot of men, um, when, you, when you actually see, when they write their food down, especially with the clients that I have and the guys that I have that I train, they write their foods down and there's, there's simply not enough protein in their diet. Um, it's a lot of carbs and a lot of fats. Yes, and I find the same with women, a lot of carbohydrates, lots of fats and, and also lots of hidden sugars because there's so many hidden sugars in things that you don't realise, right. lots and lots of processed food. So it's a good idea when you're buying food to look at the ingredients and realise that there's lots of things that end in O-S-E that are forms of sugar and that's glucose, fructose, lactose. Yeah. If you see anything like that on an ingredients list, it's actually a form of sugar. And you know, obesity is a growing problem Definitely. all over the world, yeah. um, and it's largely due to sugars and fats and unhealthy eating. That's right, and I think it also gives you that spike as well. So you, yeah. you've got energy for you know maybe 10 to 20 minutes, and then suddenly you just take a slump, and, yeah. and again you just and you keep having that effect, and you, you you want more of those carbs, and then you keep having carbs, and you keep having those pipe, those kind of like big highs, and then like big lows in yeah. the day. Um, so definitely a no-no to stay away from. I think so and yeah. I think um, linking into what you're saying about carbs it's good to understand the difference between the two types of carbohydrates because right. you've got refined and unrefined and um, all the refined stuff is the bad stuff that's the stuff you get in cakes and biscuits sweets. and bread and yeah. sweets so that's no good but the kind of thing like the brown pasta and the granary type bread yeah. that type of carbohydrate is what you should be going for. Yeah because it keeps you fuller for longer, doesn't 100%. it? And also before a workout, you need those type of foods to kind of give you that slow release energy throughout your workout as well. So it's a good source to have before your workouts too. Yeah, because a lot of people, when they're on diets, they have too little to eat, don't they? they come to the gym and, and, and the blood sugars drop yeah. and they get dizzy, have to sit down and rest. I've seen that several yeah. times. So try and have a look at your, your diet and have a really good think about how you could make even small changes, decrease the amount of sugar and fat. And you know, interestingly, low fat foods often have a lot of sugar in them. Yeah. So it's good to try and keep a low fat diet, but just make sure that in doing that, that you're not taking in more sugar than, than you realize. So check the ingredients, I think. 100%. Lots of fruit, lots of vegetables. Alcohol's got sugar in too. We've yeah. got to remember that, sadly, but it has. Uh, You've got to up, keep your up eye on your that. Protein, up so. your protein, up your fruit and veg. Yeah and exercise and you'll be fit and fabulous. So try that and we'll see you next time for our fitness tips.
Thank you very much, Jane and Ilya. So now I'd like to introduce Dr. Nihara Kraus to the show. Hello. Hello. How are you? Very well, thank you. Now, uh, you're becoming quite a regular, so I love that because I love the advice that you give. And this time we're going to be talking about men. Right, indeed. Because <clears throat> apparently men are becoming very, very concerned about their, their image. And I did have mm -hmm. a few a few stats here. This was an article in The Guardian in 2012, actually. Uh, and this was done at the Centre of Appearance at the University of West England. And this was a study of 394 British men. And apparently, 80.7% um, of these men talking ways that promote anxiety about their body image by referring to perceived flaws and imperfections compared to 75% of women. So I was quite surprised by that because I thought me women would be more sort of self-conscious about themselves than, than men, but apparently not. And also, 38% of men said they would sacrifice at least at least a year of their life in exchange for a perfect body. And this was again higher than the, the women. Yes. What do you make of that? <laughs> well, I think that um, certainly anxiety in men is increasing. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, there is more of a focus on uh, achievement. Mm -hmm. And the pressure to achieve is certainly... Um, something that men aren't finding so easy to deal with and part of achievement these days isn't only about achieving well in terms of you know your job and relationships but it's also about achieving um, a good body. Why, why do you think that is? Why do you think there's been such a change? Well I think there's be, uh, certainly there's a portrayal in the media including social media mm -hmm. about um, certain body shapes and size, there's an increase in terms of focus on exercise, some of which is, isn't all bad, yeah. um, but I think it's been twinned with success and I think that when uh, body shape appears to be something that is an indicator of success for certain men that can seem to be a difficult goal to reach. So yeah. if it raises anxiety, if it mixes with perhaps not having a huge amount of self-esteem, then the combination isn't always so good. Mm. I'm wondering here as well if it doesn't have anything to do also with sort of more women sort of working and being successful and being bosses and managers. So I don't know if some men maybe aren't comfortable with that. They feel like they have to compete on a, on a different level now. I don't know if what you think about that. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> about that. I mean, I think certainly there is a change in women, but I think yeah. it's a lot more about sort of competition with other men, with other men and mm -hmm. a sort of a you know a kind of a, a pressure to get to the top I think more okay. than anything. And obviously eating disorders are also on the rise. <laughs> yes. Um, what, what advice would you give to men that are going through through this situation? Um, well, first of all, uh, seek help mm -hmm. because um, men often don't come forward yeah, very easily. Yeah. There's a sort of uh, misconception that eating disorders only affect women. Well, that's not true. Mm -hmm. um, it certainly does affect more women than men, but mm -hmm. that might be because it's a bit of a hidden condition. Yeah, women are more um, open to speak about things. Well, exactly, they? and yeah. I think that all the, the sort of more traditional eating disorders, anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, might be more female-linked. Mm. Uh, there are things like body dysmorphic disorder, which the press called bigorexia, which is really uh, the kind of, you know, working out a lot, building lots of muscles, mm. but in a very compulsive frantic way yeah. which affects men more and there's certainly an increase in steroid uh, use Gosh. or abuse as a result of it uh -huh. um, and uh, uh, exercise addiction. Okay and in terms of sort of advice on maybe the way you think to deal with these kind of things. Is there any, are there any tips that you can give to the viewers? And obviously they can't say everything here because it's not a counselling session but yes. any sort of things that you, general advice that you could give on the, um, on the way you look at yourself. Uh, well, I think look at yourself as a complete person. You know, you are not just the way you look, you are the person you are. Mm -hmm. uh, work on building on strengths, um, develop yourself, you know, focus yeah. on things, have a goal. And if you feel that perhaps uh, one area of your life has gone out of control, then, you know, small steps to kind of make change. But it's mm -hmm. definitely worthwhile. To, um, yeah. and, and work on building your self-esteem and confidence. Okay, let me just read a few more stats here because some of these are, are actually quite shocking. Um, now, sometimes we think that, you know, when people make jokes about others and you think men are sort of tougher at taking, like little, little yeah. jo jokes, but yeah. apparently they get really, really upset as well. So 
some, it says here 30% have heard someone refer, refer to their beer belly, which they, they hate. 19% have been described as chubby and 19% have overheard talk about their man boobs, moobs, which, which they call them. And apparently that really, really does affect them. But you see people sort of messing around, don't you? And saying, oh, look at your beer belly. And, look, and you think, you don't really think it affects them that much, but yes. it, really, it really does. Yes, well, I think we have become better at not making uh, <laughs> comments about weight. Yeah. Uh, so the sort of fat talk, as it's called, with women, you know, where kind of we, we don't, you know, is, is my bum, does my bum look big in this? But women uh, are well known to be, so to well, be exactly, sensitive, to be sensitive. To the, to, And to I think that things. it's realising that men are sensitive too. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned obesity or kind of weight. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you're a man and you are heavy that actually is quite difficult particularly if you're young yeah. at school being a chubby boy is not an easy thing no, at all it's, it's very easy to get teased or even bullied I, I was actually watching a, a documentary the other day about a, a man he was he was quite large was very very obese and people would just make jokes with him like oh you know big just big guy just saying things yes, like that and yes. he actually said that it made him feel suicidal. He was so depressed about the way he looked. He wasn't able to, he didn't even want to be seen outside with his sons. He wanted to go and play with them, but he wasn't able to, he couldn't yes. keep up. Yes. And comments like these it almost drove him to, to kill himself. Yes. So it's something really, it really It causes serious. a huge amount of distress. Mm. Um, and that's a difficult one because we know that exercise um, and you know feeling good about your body helps with depression. Yeah. Um, but of course, you can also become depressed mm -hmm. if your body image doesn't make you feel particularly happy. So it's a fine balance in yeah. terms of getting it right. Definitely. Yeah. Also, the main thing is make sure you do speak to someone if you are feeling exactly. feeling low yeah. about your the way you look and about anything in general, really, if you're yes. feeling low. Yes. Thank you so much for it's your input pleasure. again. Thank you so it's much. Pleasure. But do stay tuned, guys, because we have lots more after the break for you. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show. So we're going to be continuing our topic of the way men see themselves and you know, being self-conscious about their image. And I'd like to go to a Skype call now with Stefan Pierre Mitchell. Hello, Stefan. Hi. How are you? Good, thanks. Now, Stefan, you have been on the show before and you, you did sort of go into, into depth about some stuff that you went through as a child, being brought up in a home uh, and all the, the trauma that you went through. But luckily, you know, you, you found help. You came out on the other side. You were very positive. But also the stuff that you're doing now because you, you're an actor and you also do some modelling, things like that. How, how pressurised is that industry to be in when it comes to body image? A lot. Um, really especially modeling. I think as an actor, it's um, easier because you do find those roles for, you know, the bigger size, the smaller size. Yeah. Um, but I think as a model or actually musical theatre, I've worked in, you know, backstage, because I'm not from a musical theatre, but I've worked and shared the stage with musical theatre students and have, you know, trained with some of them. And mm. you can see a lot of pressure on the boys. Right. They have to build food. They have to be light so they can do the lift and you know there's that body image that you know they obsess mm -hmm. but how how do you for yourself keep yourself grounded and not sort of get too overly concerned with that how do you do right. it for you I'll, I'll make a confession when i was 15 16 well 16 to 18 i was extremely big extremely really? big uh -huh. like I'm, I'm like now size what my waist is 28 30. At that time, I was between 36 and 38, and I was just wow. 16. And my grandma used to tell me one thing. It's like, when you eat food, eat just to cover the hunger, not to, you know, don't be greedy with food. And yeah. I think that's what I was doing. I was shoving things, cakes, bread. I couldn't care less. And one day I thought to myself, because I have a lot of palpitation, and mm -hmm. I'm beginning to look very heavy. There was a point I couldn't even look in the mirror. You yeah. know, the pot belly you're talking about, the man boobs and everything. And I became really upset. Uh -huh. and, and I thought to myself, first of all, I think I need to look into my life, my health, and accept the fact that, you know, I have to look in what I eat. And I started walking a lot to mm -hmm. work rather than taking the bars or anything like that. And, you know, with time... So you obviously lost a lot of weight <laughs> since yeah. then. 
But obviously, you also do you also work with you, you work with youngsters, don't you? Because you're yes, you're a mentor as well. Do you notice a trend in them sometimes? And how do you how do you help them not to be obsessed with their image? Um, yeah, first of all, I told them because I work a lot with you know musicians, uh, people that want to aspire to be models and everything. So uh, some of them they want this perfect body, and I said to my I said it to my to the, to themselves um, when I went into modeling and I tried and I was gutted that I couldn't be signed to a certain agency because of my height. Mm. Then I started to look to myself and said, accept who I am. You know, I'm not going to yeah. ever be six feet tall. But uh -huh. if the opportunity comes, you know, let your personality shine through. Yeah. Now I model alongside with people that are six feet tall. I, you've got a very big personality, haven't you? Stephen? Because of the personality <laughs> that you bring on stage. Uh -huh. And, you know, use whatever you've got yeah. to shade it out. Yeah, you know? it's not always about the image. It's other. It's it's not. You're made up of a lot of things, not just what's on the outside. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right, then. It's been lovely speaking to you, Stefan. Thank you. And big shout out to models of diversity. Can I just say? Yeah, of United course. Kingdom, Go ahead. Love United them. Kingdom and the US are doing a fantastic job in yeah. giving a, a voice and a stage to diversity, whether you're black, mixed, Definitely. big, small, and they're doing yeah. a fantastic job uh, to build that image and it's okay to be who you are. Exactly. As long yeah. as you go for your passion. Yeah, I love, so I love models of diversity. Thank you, Stefan. Lovely speaking to you. Thank you. Okay, so now we'll go over to Malik Kadu. How are you, Malik? I'm fine. I'm all right. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet so you. So, can you tell us a bit about yourself, first of all? Yeah. Um, I'm a sports model, sports and lifestyle model, and mm -hmm. sports therapist trainer as well. So okay. I specialise in massage and rehab. And yeah. yeah. Okay. So obviously you, you have a lot of dealings with, with men that come to you for training and stuff like that. Have you yeah. noticed that men are becoming a bit obsessed with the way they look? I mean, definitely. It depends. Like it depends what's driving them to, you know, go and work out. It could be from self ego. It can be from sense of security because mm. they may feel like having muscle gives them that sense of you know looking big intimidation you know um and looking good obviously confidence the feedback mm -hmm. appealing yeah. to the opposite sex yeah. you know all that comes into account of being obsessed with you know um, working out you can have a general awareness towards your own mm -hmm. health yeah. and fitness so therefore you know you could be addicted or obsessed with you know, going to the gym, you know, especially if you're an athlete as well, it, yeah, you, yeah. you're going to be obsessed because if you're a high You've trainer, got a goal you have yeah, to, to reach, right? You have to main, try and maintain your weight and everything. Mm. So, yeah, there's, okay. there's many reasons why. How do you keep yourself not obsessed with, with your looks? Because <laughs> um, you're also a model. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, a hard just, question, sorry. No, no, it's not, it's, not, it's not really because I think I yeah. just know um, what happens when you push yourself too far. Yeah. When you become too addicted to that high. Have you ever been addicted to that? Yeah, maybe when I was younger. But yeah. yeah, I, I used to be addicted to exercise because I used it as, a, as an outlet for, because I used to be depressed. So I used yeah. to train a lot because it made me feel a bit better at yeah. the time. Yeah. So I overdid it because, not because I wanted to look a certain way, just because I felt better. But obviously, incidentally, I also toned up and everything. So I looked yeah. quite good. But then other people do it because they're so concerned about yeah, how they look. They're so concerned about how mm. they look and you know that could obviously you're just risking yourself an injury really mm -hmm. rather than just pacing yourself and yeah. just as much as the workout is rest and a lot of, I always say that to clients is rest and adaptations your muscles have to adapt to yeah, the yeah. stress that you're putting on it so it's really important to rest. Uh -huh. So, which people don't do much of, do they? When they've, <laughs> when they've, when they've got a goal. Okay. Yeah, of course not. Yeah. Do you, do you notice it sort of maybe people over, men over exercising more with the younger generation? Would you say than, than the older? Or just say it's yeah. about about the same? I think it's about 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 the same really. Yeah. It's, especially like, the, the, you know, there's people that I've come across and like I've grown up with. Mm -hmm. And maybe they were getting bullied, so oh. they'll get kind of called, get called all these names and everything. Mm -hmm. So like years later, you'll find them in the gym and they look really big. Yeah. And that's only because they they feel more secure. Mm, yeah. And they feel like you, you know you can't, can't mess with them. Yeah, like yeah. If, if they're bigger. So it's so. like it's, it's it's to do with that. And, and just there's so many thing. issues involved, isn't there? Yeah, it's there's, like, there's it's plenty really, of issues with males yeah. anyway. There's definitely plenty of issues that are involved yeah. when 
when it comes to working out and keeping fit. Okay. I want to know a bit about you, Malik. <laughs> yeah. Malik. <laughs> pronounced your name wrong. Malik. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Let's okay, so tell me a bit about yourself because you've also worked with some pretty, uh, you know, big names, haven't you? You allowed to talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. Go on mind. there and tell us. <laughs> um, yeah, quite recently, I think two months ago, mm -hmm. um, I worked with Cheryl Cole. Mm -hmm. I've done a, a music video. I've worked with. Um, oh, you dance as well. No, 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 I was, oh, um, music. yeah, I was like playing snooker with her. Oh, okay, you were so in the, okay. Like, I was oh, like nice. in her music video and um, So what was it like playing snooker with Cheryl Cole? That was, <laughs> that, was <laughs> that was all right. Could you concentrate? <laughs> nah, I didn't, no. actually, yeah. Um, yeah, recently I worked with a Marie, um, Jose Mourinho, the Chelsea, wow. okay. Chelsea manager, and just like athletes from Usain Bolt. And what football. did you do with Usain Bolt? Uh, we did um, a runway show. Uh -huh. for the 2012 Olympics because okay. um, Bob Marley's daughter was designing the the outwear mm -hmm. for what the Jamaicans are going to wear so um, I got picked to be on the runway mm -hmm. with Usain Bolt and nice. yeah to advertise for that. Was that exciting for you? That was that was pretty good <laughs> that was pretty good. And okay then, and what about your some your modeling how's, how's that going? That yeah it's going it's going pretty well um, we've done the world I did it recently an advert for the world cup that was good for the sun okay and that was that was amazing like one of the most amazing times like, it was like a two-day shoot in l street mm -hmm. yeah, and that was that was great with everyone from that like, sports on screen and yeah that was that was good stuff okay. it was great banter <laughs> it was good yeah yeah definitely great <laughs> but how, how do you keep yourself sort of like not obsessed with your looks and because obviously i can imagine it's hard your model you're in the public eye, you're, you know, you're in that kind of industry that where it can get really difficult. Yeah. What, what advice maybe would you give to other young men that are maybe thinking of going into modelling or, or industries like that, what would you say? I think it's like with sports modelling or modelling in general, it's, it's more than just your image, it's more than just your build. Mm -hmm. You've got to, the, the shoots are really skill based. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can be coming up against someone that's big, but then the client demands more than that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he might be bigger than me, but can he act in front of screen? Can he no, put okay. across an accent? Can he, um, you know, play football, play a sport? Or, and it's all different things, really. Mm. You've got, it's, it's, all, it's all based on what skill you bring to the table, not just your build or that. So my suggestion is just like, just, be yourself really and yeah. perfect what you're really good at if it's playing the piano or yeah because everyone, yeah, everyone has their strengths yeah everyone has their strengths and you know depending on what the shoot is based on you never know they could be asking for we want I don't know a French speaking footballer yeah, yeah. yeah. You, know, you never know do exactly you know? <laughs> so it's just one of those things you just really just got to be yourself yeah definitely I wouldn't want, want anyone like getting big and thinking oh I have to look like this to because it's it's more, that's the know, thing we have to we do have to work with what we have we shouldn't yeah. I know it's easy to say but we should, really shouldn't compare ourselves with other people because everyone you have your own talents and sometimes definitely. when we don't know what they are yet but by practicing and doing different things you would you will discover that won't you yeah definitely but Malik it's been lovely speaking to lovely you speaking and to all you the too. best with everything that you're going to do yeah, and continue definitely. doing brilliant okay Thanks. but guys do stay tuned because after the break we have our self-development coach Chris Brown who's going to actually be talking about believing in you and I'll also be answering a question from a viewer so stay tuned Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show. I'm now in the self-development clinic with Chris Brown. Hello, Chris. Hi, Chrissy. How are you? I'm really good, thanks. How about yourself? I'm good, thank you. Yeah? Shall we answer a question from a viewer first? Answer a question. Because you'll, you'll be talking about how to believe in you. Believe in you, yes. Okay, that's going to be very important for today's topic as well. Because I have this question from a viewer, and he says, Hi, Chrissy. There have been various guests on the show with stories about career changes. That sounds quite tempting, but I'm the only person working in our family. Whilst it might be a good thing in the long term, I'd probably face a financial hit for a few years. So is it a good idea or a bit selfish to contemplate a career change now? Now, 
um, the first question I personally, if I were in your shoes, I would ask myself is why do I want a career change? Is it because I'm just a bit bored? If that's the case, I probably wouldn't do it now if I'm the only one working in my family. But if, however, um, it's the case where what you're earning really isn't enough to keep the family going or you really hate your job and it's making you feel you know, low and depressed even, then I, I would contemplate changing career or doing something for myself. Now, um, as I said, if you feel the only one working at the moment, you do have to obviously be careful. You have to sort of think mm. about what you're doing. Maybe yep. not, I wouldn't leave my job completely and start looking for something else, probably. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you want to even start your own business. It's up to you, obviously. But maybe I would also consider keeping my job or working part time and then also maybe doing something on the side or looking for another job or starting my own business. So I think you just have to be sensible, sensible mm. about it. So, but I, you asked, you know, if, it, if it's a bit selfish. I don't think it's selfish at all to, to think of a career change. I just think it shows that you have ambition and drive. And I think that's a great thing because at the end of the day, if we don't take risks, we're not going to get anywhere in life. Exactly. And that's why a lot of people, they stay stuck doing the same job for years because they're afraid of, you know, stepping out and doing something different. And maybe that, that thing that's different is going get, to get you to be really successful. So I think just have a think. Think logically about it and probably if I were in your shoes, I would take the risk. Well, it's funny you say that. Depending. I think, well, I actually agree with you in a sense, but mm. what I get from You're not allowed to disagree is, with me, I'm not no, allowed I'm to joking, disagree. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> you're allowed, you're allowed. <laughs> right. The thing about it is uh, he's a guy with a lot of compassion. He actually mm. really cares for his family. Yeah, That's true. what's making this difficult at this yeah, time. Yeah. So. He's quite honourable, great mm -hmm. guy. But yeah. I do believe in taking a risk at the end of the day because that mm. risk that he takes could actually, things could really block really big at yeah. the end of the day. It's but true. he's got to know why he's doing it in the first yeah, exactly. place. You know? I mean, family, priority, good. Good, yeah. honourable. But all the best with whatever decision you make. And if you have a question for me as well, you can email me on chris at chrissybshow.tv. But now over to Chris with how to believe in you. How to believe in you. Which is very, very you. important. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Because um, I was listening to the guest earlier on and we're talking about, you mentioned about men. Mm -hmm. And obviously we're talking about externally about how somebody actually presents himself a look when they train, these sort yeah. of areas as well. But there's a lot of areas that we need to delve into, which came up is the inner of the person yeah. mm -hmm. you know um just that whole thing um i think it was manic was saying that earlier on about the kind of one who gets beaten up all the time and then goes yeah, to gym and yeah, blows up true. that's true. an internal thing mm -hmm. that's going on and we got to really think about it when we talk about believing you it's not as easy for everybody to just say well look you know i believe in myself and that's it and that's confidence and mm. that's where it is no it's not because we're actually like a little blueprint of everything that's happened to us along the way, mm -hmm. when you grew up, uh, your family, your parents, mm -hmm. um, relationships, friendships, all this is a blueprint that later on when you're adult, that really constitutes who you are. And that is working out, well, who mm -hmm. am I? In the first place, before we say believe in you, we've got to work out, well, who, who am I? You know? Am I a product of my environment? Is it the actual people that are around me? The things that was told? Because sometimes we've got a situation where somebody says, well, just say, I don't like these glasses all the time something probably happened when I was younger. Mm. That uh, doesn't mean really that's what I think. So we've got to get to that point where we realise, well, that stops. Yeah. Now, who am I? I need to start believing me. What am I really about at the mm. end of the day? I'm an adult that's now, important. what do I want? Yeah? Yeah. So let's go back into the area of, um, which I always mention, what do you really want? You know, what is your real desire? Why, why are you aiming for that goal? Is it mm. to do with that blueprint or is it something that you really want right now? Much to the guests who actually wrote in as well. Yeah. Yeah. What do you really want? Work out about yourself first. What do you need? Is it going to constitute to anything really? Is there a reason why you actually want to make that change, mm -hmm. right? When you've worked out your characteristics, who you are and what you're about, you should be on a better role at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah? Now, Some people are actually trying to change for others and that's obviously, okay, it's great to want to make other people happy, but you have to do it for you first. You have to. First. You have to. You've yeah. got to do it mm -hmm. for you. And once you realise what you want, write it down. Yeah. Jot it down. Work out what qualities you have which actually matches with that. It should be a plain sailing role at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It's the ones where you think, well, this is what I want, just as you said, because somebody else is doing it, somebody else told me to do it, and I'm going to do that, but it has nothing to do with you, really. Mm -hmm. It gets a hard struggle along the way. So work out what you want. Yeah. Now, now that you've worked out what you want, why does it seem always so impossible, right? 
Now, it always seems that way automatically because of our thinking. The only mm. thing that stands in the way, as I mentioned last week, actually we were talking about this extension, is the you. You stand in the way of what you actually want, mm -hmm. what you perceive. So let's put it this way. You've always believed, well, I won't be able to do that. Guess what? You're right. I've always believed that I will be able to do that. Guess what? You're, You're right, right. Yeah. at the end mm -hmm. of the day. So you've got to look at that and think, well, what do I really want? What's in the way? What's actually stopping me from getting that? Realize that it is you. It's your mental thinking mm -hmm. at the end of the day, which blocks it. Now, in saying that, I've got something else here. Get rid of self-doubt. Get That's a hard one, isn't it? Oh, it is so hard mm. at the end of the day. Now, the thing about it but is... But it's not impossible. That's it. You can do it. Let's speak positively. <laughs> no, that <laughs> is it. That is it. Really, yeah. it's not impossible. And we've got to know that we can actually do it. And that goes back to the same. Breaking down those areas that says, I can't do mm. this. Who told you that? You know, somebody else's opinion shouldn't determine who you're going to be later on. Yeah. You've got to start making your own opinions, your own judgments and start working towards it. Mm. So we need to remove the self-doubt. It is not easy. I know I'm sitting here saying this now, yeah. saying, well, get rid of self-doubt. Do, do you know what I think it is sometimes mm. as well? When, um, because everyone gets doubts, right? Everyone, it comes to all of us. And I think some people think, oh, because I'm having these doubts, it must mean that I may be inferior to other people and I really can't make it. But they don't realize that even the most successful people, they think these things go for everyone's minds. They're not yeah. like, a robot that they're not going to have any emotions it, it crosses their mind but they deal with it in a different way they get rid of Very it much. immediately they don't Very let it so. sit there and fester and you know turn into other things yeah. so everyone it happens to everyone i don't i, I can't think of any person that that's even come on the show that's been successful that says they didn't go through these these thoughts Doubts. but it's just the way you deal with them and how you you know you you get rid of them and just yeah. move on yeah. or just ignore them completely and just do what you have to do how you actually process it at the end of the day. You're the person who can say, well, look, you know what? I'm actually going to cut this off now mm -hmm. and it's going to drop, it's going to let go and I'm going forward. Or you've got that thing where one day you felt really positive, where I'm always a bit thinking about it, get positive, kick up a lot of dust, dust yeah. settles, you're still in the same place. Here we go. I cut it off, but I go back and I pick it up when something comes and it mm -hmm. reminds you of that thing mm -hmm. and you still can't move on. You know, it's, it's not easy but it can be done, yeah. right? So I'm not going to say, look, get rid of your doubts and that's that. No, it's a process. It's yeah. a process, you know? Um, the other one as well is this. We're going to talk about putting into action, right? Thoughts influence action, yeah. right? So we've well, got to not. think about... <laughs> <laughs> action or... <laughs> or the other way, <laughs> right? Thoughts yeah. influence action. Yeah. So you've got to think about the thoughts that you're actually having as well, right? We've got to actually starve those negative thoughts no oxygen, don't give them anything, you know? Mm -hmm. Don't feed them in any kind of way, right? Thoughts influence action. So if I'm thinking in the right way and the right mindset, I'm gonna do the right things. Mm -hmm. And there's gonna come times where I'm gonna feel pretty low or pretty yeah. bad, but I've gotta be strong enough to get my mind back in that place. So I'll start taking actions. As you start taking actions, it has a snowball effect. It yeah. starts to move, things start moving I like what on. you said there about not, not feeding them, because I was just mm. having this image in my head of like these little demons in your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And sort of walking around and then you're sort of feeding them with like giving them food and stuff and they're getting stronger and stronger. But if yeah. you, obviously if you starve them, and you do something else. They've got positive. nowhere to go yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah, and like you that. just said it, yeah, yeah, feeding them. We'll think about the sort of things we actually feed them as well every yeah. day. Yeah. And it's not only that, somebody else comes along and feed them for you. Yeah. Oh, you know, sure. they try and remind you of something that was mm. way back when. Yeah. That's another thing as well. Choose who you surround yourself with as well. You know, because yeah. you don't want the sort of people who are going to keep feeding these things, feeding these things at the end of the day. You need to surround yourself in the right environment, right people who are going to go with you in a direction you need to yeah. go. Be very much yeah. aware of that. Yeah. Yeah? Now, just finish up on that. We need to actually make a plan of action, yeah. right? So I'm going to go back to the top and say, look, you need to actually write down the plan of what you want to do, mm -hmm. where you want to go, right? And realize that these things are repetitious. We actually learn from repetition. Mm -hmm. You think about a child, you start teaching a child how to read or the animal, the cat, you say it so many times, cat, 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 cat. Mm -hmm. Oh, Maybe. that's a cat, dog, dog, they know it's dog. We can still do that now as well. Mm -hmm. It's by repetition. We've got to relearn, be productive about it and start believing you that you yeah. can do it. And anyone can, right? Anyone, right. anyone can. Anyone can. Brilliant. Thank yeah. you so much, Chris. Pleasure. And we'll see you again next time on next the week. show. So we have reached the end 
of the program, I'll just leave you with this final thought. Now, I think what makes, personally, what makes a person beautiful is also their love and care for others. So don't let the media dictate to you what's beautiful and what is ideal. I would say, look up, you know, do what you can for yourself. Look after your health and your well-being, but also look after each other. So we have finished for today. If you want more information about the show, you can visit the website, chrissybshow.tv. You can also email on chris at chrissybshow.tv. Bye-bye for now. Welcome back. Now I'm joined with... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry.